Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about the SpaceX IFT-3 launch, but more importantly, we're going to be talking about what could possibly happen during the IFT-4, the Integrated Flight Test 4 of the Starship Super Heavy rocket that they launched from Starbase, Texas. Now, the IFT-3 launch went really well. Uh, they made it to uh space spacex made it to space again and the boost back burn of the booster was really great the stage stage separation was absolutely perfect uh the booster didn't quite make it for a soft landing in the gulf of mexico but you know you win some you lose some right they tested the payload door the mechanism for the payload door seems like it went okay it didn't go perfectly there's a little bit of hitch there um, so I think they have to clean that up a little bit. Um, the propellant transfer apparently went really well. Uh, they did not do the booster, uh, or sorry, the engine relight while they were in space. So that's one thing they didn't get done, but that's one thing that they can do for the IFT4 launch. Now, we all know how important, really important it is for SpaceX to get these missions absolutely perfect. But SpaceX also knows that they can build upon every single launch. So IFT-1 absolutely obliterated the launch pad. IFT-2, launch pad's fine. IFT-3, launch pad's fine. IFT-2, booster blew up right after stage separation. Uh, they lost the ship. Um, they had to destroy it. And this time, booster did the boost back burn, did the flip move, didn't blow up right away and though it didn't do the soft landing in the gulf of mexico uh, i would say this is a pretty good success story for the booster this time now the ship continued on with its mission for a long time and almost almost made it back to the indian ocean where they were supposed to splash down made it back through the atmosphere beautiful video from spacex of this re-entry uh, you can see the plasma building up on the heat tiles. Heat tiles seem like they're in really great shape. So that's another test that they had to get done. Um, so they are in a really good spot right now with the Starship. Now, if they've made adjustments to the Starship for IFT-4, which they more than likely have, I mean, every single rocket, there's an iterative process. And through software updates, through hardware upgrades, SpaceX is building the next generation of Starships uh, right now. And they're already being built. Uh, Elon says version one is not as good as version two. Version two will not be as good as version three. Going forward, version four, version five, it's going to be astronomical, if you will, for the future of spaceflight. Now, they needed to get the propellant transfer done for the NASA missions. So it's a milestone they needed to do in order to do a transfer of propellant, uh, of propellant in orbit. And they got a small version of that done, um, which is a key milestone for SpaceX and NASA for the upcoming Artemis 3 mission, where they will be landing people back on the moon for the first time in about 50 years. So it's a huge, huge deal that they did a propellant transfer demonstration. And maybe next round, IFT-4, possibly they're going to be doing more propellant transfer in the ship itself. Um, we're not exactly sure what they're going to be doing with that, but I'm assuming they're going to up the ante, up the game a little bit, do more propellant transfers as they go on, test the systems internally, test the plumbing. Everything seemed to go well, though. Everything seemed to go well. There was no word that anything went bad with the propellant transfer. So as of right now, at this recording, everything looks good for the propellant transfer. Now, like I was saying before, the bay door, it's a PEZ door, and it opens up like a PEZ dispenser. And the Pez dispenser dispenses Starlink satellites. And it looks like the door worked okay. Not 100%. It looked like a little bit, like a little bit slow closing, a little bit of a tick, 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 tick. It's kind of like, um, like a garage door. You know, like if you pull up on a garage door, it's like, kunk, 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 kunk. it sort of did that. Uh, but it didn't seem like it was bad. They may just have to work on some mechanical issues. Um, you know, get it to a place where it's a little bit smoother and then that'll be completely fixed. So we may see another, um, another version of that in the next flight. 
But also they may add on to that. So internally in the starship, there needs to be a payload for these starlings. There needs to be a mechanism in there to push them down, push them down, push them down, push them out of the payload door. So possibly we're going to see a demo of the payload door opening and also the Starlink satellite Pez dispenser mechanism itself in IFT4. Now, is there going to be a Starlink? There might be one, one or two uh, for this mechanism, but is it worth it to possibly disrupt the whole mission for a demonstration of a Starlink uh, exit from the Starship? Um, I don't know at this point. I want to know what you think in the comments down below, though. Let me know if you think they're going to actually eject a Starship from this, th or a Starlink from this thing, because I don't think so for this time. I don't think so for IFT4. I think IFT4 is going to be the mechanism and the door, and that's it. I don't think we're going to get a Starlink um, ejection from this one, because it's not worth it. I mean, because if a Starlink gets stuck and starts tumbling out of control, they're going to have to destroy the whole mission, and that's not worth it for um you know for the propellant transfer for more nasa missions um to get more data f from re-entries i don't think it's really worth it until they get the mechanism and the door fixed so it's an iterative process i think they're going to do the door and i think they're going to be doing the mechanism uh during this next launch like i said before the propellant transfer i think they're going to be doing like a little bit bigger of a demonstration i don't think they're going to be i think they're going to up the ante a little bit not exactly sure how much they're going to up the ante but they do have to move some propellant around uh, when they go starship to tanker in orbit and if they can show that they are capable of doing that at a smaller scale um, we may see a tanker by the end of 2024 flying into orbit and if that's the case we may also see a propellant transfer from a tanker to a starship in 2024 which would be absolutely mind-blowing i don't know i don't know if that's going to uh, be in the first half. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the second half um, of 2024, probably fourth quarter of 2024, uh, around September, October, November, December, you know, in that area. Um, I think they're going to be doing something like that, something big to top off the year. Because uh, like Elon said before, they want to do nine launches this year. And at the rate that they did them, uh, that they've done them so far, IFT1, IFT2, and IFT3, each one got subsequently um smaller in range so it took less time for ift2 than it did for ift1 to get ready and then ift3 was less time than ift2 so we're hoping ift4 because there wasn't any real bad damage to anything um spacex is going to do a protocol where they talk to the faa and tell them about a, a they're going to report on what happened and how they're going to fix it and then if the faa signs off on it and if spacex has already fixed it then the faa will sign off on it immediately and if SpaceX still has to do all of the testing for the booster and the ship still. So uh, it's going to be a little bit. It's going to be a little while, but it might be two months. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing two, two to three months before we see another launch, which IFT4, I want to go. Let's, let's try to get me there, okay? Let's try to do that. Um, how you can help is by hitting the like button on this video. Just boost it up a little bit. That's all I ask. Also, if you like spaceflight content, hit the subscribe button because not only will you get my content, but you'll also get other spaceflight reporters content in your feed. So please hit the subscribe button and like button. YouTube will see that and start processing that and telling you in the algorithm, hey, you like spaceflight content. We do too. So I'm going to send you more spaceflight content. So thank you for doing that. But also let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think they're going to do full PEZ? Do you think they're going to do full Starlink, ah, it's a it's a tough one, but I don't think they're going to. I don't think I don't think it's really worth it for SpaceX to go that far this this early. Maybe IFT five, maybe IFT six. I don't know. I'm thinking IFT five for a Pez dispenser, actual Starlink going into orbit, which would be ridiculous. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, this has been a fun fun ride for IFT three. IFT4 is going to be wild, and I cannot wait. So let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and join the pod squad. Hit the subscribe button. Join the pod squad. Join us. Be a member. All right. Take care. I'll see you next time.